It was that famous feast of Lupercal when citizens and senators thronged the streets and Caesar casting off that ancient sage, sage who called him to beware the Ides of March did leave the square better to see the race. There heaped he praise upon Mark Antony who led the field as he was wont to do. But Cassia remaining drew my master near and glancing round, she drew him closer yet. Brutus, I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and look of love as I was wont to have. Cassia, be not deceived. If I do veil my looks, I turn the troubles of my countenance merely upon myself. Vexed have I been of late with passions of some difference, conceptions proper only to myself. Then, Brutus, have I much mistook your passion by means whereof this heart hath buried thoughts of great value, worthy cogitations. Tell me, Brutus, can you see yourself? <laughs> no, Cassia, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection by some other thing. Tis just, and it is much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirrors as will show your hidden worthiness to your eyes, that you might see your shadow. Many of the best respect in Rome have wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassia, that you'd have me seek into myself for that which is not in me? Therefore be prepared to hear, and as you know, you cannot know yourself but by the re reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of. <laughs> what means this shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for a king. I do you fear it, then must I think you would not have it so? I would not, Cassio, yet I do love him well, but... <laughs> Wherefore do you hold me here so long? For as the gods so speed me, as I love the name of honour more than I fear death. I do know that virtue to be in you, Brutus, as well as I do know your outward favour. Well, honour is the subject of my story. I cannot tell what you or other men might think of this life, but for my single self, I had as lief not be as live to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar. So were you. We have both fed as well, and we can both withstand the winter's cold as well as he. He gods, it does amaze me, a man of so feeble a temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. Another general shout to believe these applauses are for some new honours that are heaped on Caesar. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonourable graves. <laughs> men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, lies not in our stars that we are underlings, but in ourselves. Brutus and Caesar, what should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Oh, you and I have heard our fathers say there was a Brutus once that would have brought the eternal devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you'd work me to, I have some aim. What I do think of this and of these times, I shall recount hereafter. For the present, I would not, and in love I do entreat you, be any further moved. I am glad that my weak words have sparked thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are ended. And Caesar is returning. As they pass by, pluck Lucius by the sleeve, and he will tell you what hath proceeded worthy of note today.
Ah, you pulled me by the cloak, sir. What's your will? Aye, ah, Lucius. Telleth what hath chanced today that Caesar looks so sad. Well, why, there, there was a crown offered him, and he put it by with the back of his hand thus, and then the people fell a shouting. And thrice I saw Mark Antony offer it, and well, it was not a crown neither, it was one of these uh, coronets. And as I told you, he put it by three times. But for all that, to my mind, he would fain have had it. For this time, I'll leave you. Tomorrow, if it pleases you to speak with me, uh, come home to my house. <laughs> or I will, will do so. Until I'll, then... And I should wait for you. I will do so. Until then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble, and yet I see thy honourable metal may be wrought from that it is disposed. Therefore it is meet that noble minds keep ever with their likes. For who so firm that cannot be seduced? They say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. I know where I shall keep this dagger then. Cassia from bondage will release Cassia. Therein ye gods, you make the weak most strong. Therein ye gods, you tyrants do defeat. We could win, but no Brutus to our party. Be you content and look you, Lay this paper on the preacher's chair, that Brutus may not find it. Throw this in at his window, and set this with wax upon old Brutus' statue. That done, repair to Pompey's porch, where you will find us. Come now, let's go. I will ere day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already, and the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours. It must be by his death. And for my sake, I know no personal cause to spurn at him, but for the general, he would be crowned. How that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder, and that craves careful walking. Crown him, that I grant you. We put a sting in him that at his will he might do danger with. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Um, searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up, and I'm sure it did not lie there when I went to bed. Get you to bed again. Tis not day yet. Uh, is not tomorrow then the Ides of March? <laughs> I know not, sir. <laughs> Look at the calendar and bring me word. I will, sir. exhalations whizzing in the air give so much light that I can see thereby. Brutus, thou sleepest. Awake and see thyself. Shall roam the imperial city mighty, etc. Speak, strike, redress. Brutus, thou sleepest awake. Such instigations have been often dropped where I've picked them up. Shall Rome, etc. <laughs> Thus must I piece it out. Shall Rome stand under one man's awe? <laughs> what? Rome? My ancestors did from the streets of Rome the Tarquin drive when he was called a king. Speak, strike, 
redress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O Rome, I make thee promise, if the redress will follow, thou hast achieved thy full petition at Brutus' hand. Uh, sir, uh, March is wasted fourteen days. Tis good. Go to the gate, someone knocks. Since Cassia first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the acting of a dreadful thing and its first motion, all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream. Uh, so it is your sister Cassia at the door that doth desire to see you. Let her enter. Conspiracy. Shamest thou to hide thy dangerous brow by night when evil is most free? Where then by day will you find cavern dark enough to hide thy monstrous visage? Seek not conspiracy. Hide it in smiles and affability. Good morrow, Brutus. Do I trouble you? I fear I am too bold upon your rest. I, I've been up this hour, awake all night. Give me thy hand. And let us square our resolution. Not an oath. If not the face of men, the sufferance of our own souls, the time's abuse. If these be motives weak, break off betimes and get thee home to thy idle bed. What need we? any spur to our own cause to prick us to redress. Brutus, I do not think it is meet that Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. We should find of him a shrewd contriver, and his means, if he improve them, may well stretch so far as to annoy us all. Which, to prevent, let Antony and Caesar fall together. Task would seem too bloody, Caia Cassia, to cut off the head and then to hack the limbs like wrath in death and envy following. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar. Let us be sacrificers and not butchers, Caia. We all stand up against the spirit of Caesar, and in the spirit of a man there is no blood. As for Mark Antony, do not think of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's hand when Caesar's head is off. Yet I do fear him for the engrafted love he bears to see. Alas, good Cassia, do not think of him. If he loves Caesar, all that he can do is to himself take thought and die for him. And it were much he should, because he is given to sport and wildness and much company. Peace, count the clock. The clock has stricken three, it is time to part. The morning comes upon us. I'll leave you, Brutus. Good sister, look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put on our purposes, but bear them as our Roman actors do, with untired spirit and with formal constancy. And so, good morrow until then. Good morrow, noble brother. That fateful day, the Ides of March had come. They fell on Caesar with their silver knives then stepped away with freshly blooded blades. And last, his favoured one, my master, came and clasping our great Caesar heart to heart, he brought completion with an upward stroke. The world stood still, all noise had fled from thence. As Brutus lowered the beloved form, now lifeless, and besmeared with blood, and laid it gently down on Pompey's plinth. Liberty, freedom, tyranny is dead. Run hence, proclaim it about the streets. Some to the common pulpits and cry aloud, Liberty, freedom, and enfranchisement. Senators and people, be not affrighted. Fly not, stand stiff. Ambition's debt is paid. Go to the pulpit, 
Brutus, men, women and children stand and stare and cry aloud and run about the streets as it were doomsday. Fates, we would know your pleasures. That we must die, we know. Tis but the time and the drawing days out men wait upon. Why, he that cuts off 20 years of life cuts off so many years of fearing death. Grant that, and then is death a benefit. So are we Caesar's friends who thus abridge his time of fearing death? Stoop, Romans, stoop. Let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood, up to the elbows and besmear our swords. Then walk we forth to the marketplace, and waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let's all cry, peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop then and wash. How many ages hence shall this our noble scene be acted over in states unborn and accents yet unknown? How many times shall Caesar die in sport that now on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the not of us be called the men that gave their country liberty. Let us away now. Brutus shall lead, and we will grace his heels with the best and noblest hearts of Rome. Then come with me and give me audience, friends. Cassia shall go to the next street to part the numbers. Those that will hear me, let them stay here. Those that will follow Cassia, go with her. Public reason shall be rendered for Caesar's death. They heard my master's words and cheered him on. Confidently he left the marketplace, but with too trusting and sincere a heart. For then came Antony, whose silver tongue and feigned simplicity, as if a simple man, soon won the common people to his cause. Unleashed, they left that place as dogs of war, and each Samson's fox with flaming tail. They soon had burnt my master's house and lands. Brutus and Cassia, I heard them say, were rid through the gates of Rome like madmen and out into the night. I followed, and in the months that passed, I saw them mass their armies in far lands, Illyria, Sardis, and distant Philippi. How now, Lucius? Is Cassia near? Uh, she is at hand. A word, Lucius. How she received you, I would be resolved. Hmm. With uh, respect and courtesy enough, but not with such familiar instances, nor with such free and friendly conference as she hath used of old. I would descry a hot friend cooling. I have a note, Lucius, when love begins to sicken and decay, she weareth an enforced ceremony. Comes her army on? Uh, they mean this night in Sardis to be quartered. Um, the greater part, uh, the horse in general, is come with Cassia. Hark, she has arrived. Stand ho! Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. <laughs> Judge me, ye gods. Wrong I mine enemy. If not so, how would I wrong a sister? S Brutus, this sober form of yours hides wrongs, and when you do them, I shall cut. Cassia, be content. Speak your grief softly. I do know you well, before the eyes of both our armies that should perceive nothing but love from us. Let us not wrangle, bid them move aside. And then in my tent, Cassia, enlarge your griefs and I shall give you audience. Lucius, let no man come near our tent till we are done our conference. That you have wronged me, Brutus, doth appear in this. You have noted and condemned Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians, 
where in my letters, pleading on his behalf, because I know the man, was slighted off. You wrong yourself to write in such a case. In such a time as this, it is not meet that every nice offence should bear its comment. Let me tell you, Cassia, you yourself are much content to have an itching palm. I an itching palm? <laughs> you do know that you are Brutus that speak thus, or by the gods this speech were else your last. The name of Cassia honours this corruption, and therefore chastisement shall hide her head. Chastisement? Remember March? The Ides of March, remember? Did not great just Julius bleed for justice sake? What villain but did touch his body, but did stab and not for justice? Shall one of us, that struck the foremost man in all the world, but for supporting robbers, shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes? I should rather be a dog and bay at the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bay not me, I'll not endure it. You do forget yourself to hedge me in. I am a soldier, I, older in practice and abler than yourself to make conditions. Go to Cassia, you are not. I am. I say you are not. I am, urge me no further, I may forget myself. Take heed upon your health, tempt me no further. Away, slight one. Is possible? Hear me, for I shall speak. Shall I give way and room to your rash colour? Shall I be frighted at mad woman's stare? Oh, ye mortal gods, must I endure all this? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. For from this day forth, I shall use you for my mirth, <laughs> yea, for my laughter when you are waspish. Has it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it shall please me well. As for my sake, I should be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an older soldier. Not a better. Did I say better? And if you did, I care not. Oh, Caesar, when he lived, durst not thus have moved me. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassia, in your threats, for I am armed so strong with honesty that they pass by me like an idle wind that I respect not. I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath bribed my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities. But Brutus hath made mine greater than they are. Sheathe your dagger. Be angry when you will, you shall find scope. Do what you will, this honour shall be humour. Oh, Cassia, you are yoked with a lamb who carries anger as a flint bears fire, who much enforced shows a hasty spark and straight is cold again. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart also. Oh, Brutus. What's the matter? Have you not love enough to bear with me when that rash humour which my mother gave me makes me forgetful? Yes, Cassia. And whenever you are earnest with your Brutus, I shall believe your mother chides and leave you so. I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassia, I'm sick of many griefs. Portia is dead. Oh, Portia? She oh, is dead. Impatient at my absence, 
and grieved that young Mark Octavius and Mark Antony had made themselves so strong for with that news her death did come this she fell distract and her attendants being absent swallowed fire and died so even so oh ye mortal gods Portia art thou gone no more I pray you I have received here letters that Octa young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty force. Uh, here are letters of expedition to Philippi. Here are letters of the self same tenor. Uh, with what addition? Uh, that by prescription and, and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus have put to death a hundred senators. Therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators, Cicero being one. Cicero one? Yes, Cicero is dead, and by that order of prescription. Then to our work alive, what do you think of our marching on Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reasons? And this it is. It is better that the enemy seek us. So shall he weary his soldier and waste his resources, whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defence and nimbleness. Good reasons must a force give way to better. The people betwixt Philippi and here stand but in forced affection, for they do grudge us contribution. The enemy marching along by them, by them shall make a greater number up. Come on, refreshed, new added, and encouraged. From such advantage we will cut them off. If we at Philippi will meet them here, these people at our back. Good brother, hear me. Uh, under your pardon, you should note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful. Our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We are at a height and ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men that taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Omitted. All the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in misery. On such a full tide are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves, or lose our venture. Well, with your will go on, wheel along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. Farewell, good fellows. Noble, noble Cassia, good night and good repose. Farewell, noble brother. Farewell, good sister. And so to Philippi upon the plain, where Antony and young Octavius made mock and taunt and sorely baited them. But Cassia and Brutus turned it back with challenges and scorn that promised war. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly, that we, lovers in peace, may lead on our days to age. But since the affairs of men rest still uncertain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we should lose this battle, then is this the very last time we shall speak together? What are you then determined to do? even by the rules of that philosophy, arming myself with patience to stay the providence of some high power that governs us below. Then if we lose this battle, you are content to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassia, no. And yet this day must end the work the Ides of March began. And whether we shall meet again, I do not know. Farewell. And forever. Farewell, Brutus. Well then, lead on. Oh. 
Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business ere it come. Yet it suffice the day will end, and then the end is known. Come home, away. escaped the words too early <laughs> and having advantage of Octavius took it too eagerly his soldiers fell to spoils whilst we by Antony are all enclosed this day I breathed first time is come round and where I did begin there shall I end. My life's run its compass. Come hither, Sirrah. Take your freedom. And now, with this good blade that went through Caesar's bowels, search thou this breast. And stand not to reason, take thou the hilts. And when my face is covered, as tis now, guide thou the blade. Caesar, thou art revenged even with the blade that killed thee. Where, oh, where, Lucius, does Cassius' body lie? Uh, lo, yonder. Are yet such Romans living, such as this? The last of all the Romans. Fare thee well. Come, poor remaining friend, rest on this rock. The ghost of Caesar did appear to me two several times at night, first in Sardis and this last night here on Philippi fields. I know my hour has come. Oh, not so, my lord. Yea, Lucius, I'm sure it has. Look at the world. The enemy has beat us to the pit. It is more worthy to leap in than tarry till they push us. I pray thee, Lucius, stay thou by thy lord. Give me your hand first. Uh, fare you well, my lord. <coughs> Caesar, be thou still. I killed not thee with half so good a will. And as he died, our foemen came, and what they spoke is seared upon my heart. First Antony stood forth, and thus he spake. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators, save only he, did that they did in envy of great Caesar. He only, in a general honest thought and goodwill to all, made one of them. His life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. But pushing to the fore, the young upstart Octavius declared that he only would host my master's corpse within his tent. And so the stage was set for future strife that in the years ahead would eat up Rome and echo down the empire still to come. O oh, Julius Caesar, thou art mighty yet. Thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails. <laughs> <laughs>